Zespri Chief Executive Dan Matheson is upbeat, I'm sure very grateful as well, about the prospects of strong demand in global Asian markets for fresh fruit with high vitamin C and of course that protective skin that kiwi fruit have. This demand is providing the confidence for the big bucks that Zespri Sun Gold licenses are going for. Now joining us from Tauranga is a Global HQ journalist and he has a specialist cap in the kiwi fruit industry, Richard Rennie. Good evening, sir. Hi, Sarah. How are you going? Good. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight. No uh, problem. Richard, uh, lots to cover in terms of there's lots going on in the kiwi fruit industry, but let's yeah. start with COVID-19 and how the growers and pack houses navigated uh, processing of fruit from your perspective. Yeah, well, as an industry that's sort of not that long out of the PSA disaster of 2011, uh, you've got to wonder if maybe there were some lessons learnt there that put it in a good state for the latest crisis um, on, on the dawn of uh, the kiwi fruit harvest season in, in mid-March. We had COVID come along and uh, pretty much locked down all the pack houses and processing uh, processes that you could um, uh, in terms of how many staff you could employ and social distancing and everything else we've all had to put up with. And uh, as did the meat companies, the kiwi fruit um, pack houses had about all of uh, less than a week to reconfigure and work out how they were going to try and harvest one of the biggest crops they've ever had. And uh, within about a matter of literally a day, so we're back in business and um, pretty much up to 90% capacity, I think, in about seven to ten days all up and uh, hummed for, through the crop. So it was remarkable, really, and pretty admirable, really, given that nobody saw this coming in any shape or form, really. So uh, attracting labour into the kiwi fruit industry from redeploying those uh, unemployed kiwis over COVID didn't seem to be so much of a problem. Why do you think that is in comparison to the challenges the dairy industry are facing? Yeah, good question. I, I guess, I suspect maybe it's because the kiwi fruit industry is fairly defined it, it sort of sits about 80 percent of your production comes out of the western bay of plenty here still although well, it is shifting a little but uh, i guess it's you have a, a number of small towns sort of scattered from one end if one end is waihi and the other end is let's say wakatani um, there's a number of urban centers where people can base themselves or you can source people from to come out to work in your orchards and, and pack houses maybe it's a bit more of a remote exercise to go to a dairy farm that might be some distance from town and, and have to base yourself there i mean i guess for the kiwi fruit sector you can stay living where you are and, and commute to work like you do for any other job so it's a bit of a different sort of a different it's a rural lifestyle but a different sort of rural lifestyle income yeah yeah and of course I think that makes a difference yeah. seasonal as well um mm. did the kiwi fruit industry have to up their game in terms of pay to attract this level they didn't seem to. Um, typically, the industry struggled to get locals um, employed. Of about the 20 odd thousand people that work in it every season, about half, 10,000 have been local. The last couple of years, there's been big efforts by New Zealand kiwi fruit growers uh, to try and get more locals engaged. But I guess a, a function of good employment levels in the Bay of Plenty and everywhere else, it's been harder to do. This year, they've managed to average about 70% kiwis in um, pack houses and harvesting. So a big jump in some areas, apparently even as high as 90%. So yeah, they've managed to get uh, people engaged, maybe who have lost, lost work elsewhere. Um, looking for work or maybe temporarily stood down from their work and uh, yeah fill some fill some big holes um, despite not having about 1200 RSE workers from overseas that never never actually got over the border to get here so yeah it was a pretty pretty good effort without any major changes in pay rates either I don't think I mean the industry starts off at a minimum but it, you can jump up fairly quickly as you get more skilled yeah those uh, Zespri Sun Gold license holders from early on will be pretty stoked with uh, the results of this closed <laughs> tender yeah. license. Could you explain yeah. about that? Well, if you go way back to when um, they first started auctioning, uh, tendering off the Sun Gold fruit, I think the very early licenses were going for about $7,000 a hectare, I think. We're going back six, seven years now. The latest round has just closed off this week, um, the tender round, and the fruit gets, uh, for anyone that's maybe not familiar with it, the fruit gets sold off as you buy a hectare, a licence to grow a hectare of sun gold kiwi fruit, and the latest round was closed off at 400000 a hectare, just basically to have the right to grow Richard, sun gold Richard, can I just fruit. interrupt? Joel's eyes, if I could, <laughs> they just went... Yeah. <laughs> Tell them they're called gold for a reason, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you need gold to grow them, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's...
thousand dollars last year, which is high. I think the really interesting thing is there were seven hundred hectares put up for tender, but there was it was oversubscribed to the tune of nine hundred and fifty hectares. So still an appetite there at those dollars, um, but just not enough to. Zespri's been very careful in controlling the supply of the fruit growth because it is a prolifically heavy for cropping fruit um, so that they don't flood the market and lower the price as a result. So constantly trying to keep demand just a little bit ahead of supply and keep prices high, which is good good marketing management, yeah. Mm, and always have uh, admired them as the absolute leaders in, in doing yeah. that, achieve, achieving yeah. premium and adding value. So yeah. how is the global markets looking? I mean, we just spoke there earlier about that uh, demand for that vitamin C in those Asian market? Yeah, well, it's, it really has been a week of kiwi fruit, hasn't it? And, and just tonight, um, Zespri have released their uh, financial report for the year in 2019-20. Um, $3.4 billion of gross revenue, of which 3.1 is of fruit income. Um, it's it's good. I mean, that's putting it on a path to probably almost eclipse uh, either sheep meat or uh, beef in within maybe two to three years, which I think respectively are about four billion a piece. So, yes, it's coming from a, a sector that seems to be only yesterday it was a two billion dollar industry, and we thought that was a big deal. Um, yes, a very strong in all markets. There's three markets that they sell more than twenty million trays: uh, Japan, China, and interestingly, Spain uh, has come out of almost nowhere to claim a big chunk of. Um, of the market for Zespri fruit. Spanish go nuts for it. And um, the Japanese, for their part, don't eat a lot of fruit. They're an ageing aging population and a shrinking population. And have had a growth of 10% a year in demand for Zespri kiwi fruit for the last five years. So it's it's really interesting where some of these um, quirks of the market are coming out. Yeah, And of course, naturally, anything that grows in popularity is uh, up for counterfeit products. Richard, early when we spoke, I was very interested in the weight that uh, Zespri have in China in market to throw their their weight around. Yeah, well, Zespri have, have managed one of the thing, one of the perennial problems with with growing fruit or any produce, as, as anyone that's farming or growing in New Zealand knows, is you can only supply it for a certain portion of the year. Often, particularly if it's a fresh product, Zespri's done a, a good job and um, with strong relationships with Italian and French growers to grow it on our off season, so they can keep the fruit on the shelf all year round. But one of the unwanted areas where the fruit's been grown is in parts of China where uh, the um, sun gold fruit has been essentially um, planted and grown in orchards to the tune of over a thousand hectares of the fruit now essentially being grown illegally without a license. There's, there are plans to ultimately grow legally in China, but that's still some way off. Um, Zespri has been given a, a, a mandate from the Chinese government through a change in the consumer law that basically uh, gives them the opportunity to, to wield a bigger stick to try and get hold of uh, those growers that are growing illegally and, and I guess ultimately pull those crops out because it's a it's a pretty big area of fruit to be, uh, to be growing where you didn't expect it to and don't want it, you have no control over. So yeah, that's a, an interesting one. I guess one of the challenges of growing a, a biological product, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, absolutely. Mm. And uh, lastly, Richard, this red kiwi fruit is getting a lot of excitement. Yeah, it's a pretty cool fruit. It's been a long time coming. Every year at the, the field days, as Esprit CEO would say to us at the media discussion, the red fruit's coming, it's coming. And anyway, it is here this year um, with the tender process, um, a little eclipsed by gold's $400,000 a hectare price but the first um, uh, tranche of red fruit 150 hectares were put up for tender and they went on average for sixty two thousand dollars so a hectare so and even then the amount supplied the amount that the growers wanted versus the amount they could acquire was um, oversubscribed so yeah really um, I think it's an exciting one it's a very there's an enthusiasm there by growers to have a go at it. It's 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 a smaller fruit. It's uh, doesn't keep. There's no secrets behind its faults. It doesn't keep as well. It's uh, fruits a bit smaller. It doesn't crop as heavily. But um, as Dave Courtney from Zespri said to me yesterday, he said, "Look, you give New Zealand growers a fruit that's just been trialled, and they'll always make it better than it was when you trialled it, just through better growing techniques and good management. So yeah, and it tastes great too. It's an awesome taste. It's more like a berry than a kiwi fruit. It's it's quite different, yeah. 
Oh, it's oh, good. so yeah. fantastic how innovative yeah. we are across all the different sectors and yeah. particularly the, all the learnings we can take from the kiwi fruit industry if we're not in it. Mm. And if you are and you got in early, good on you. I'm sure yeah. you'll be very yeah. grateful for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time to be in it, yeah. Yeah, thanks so much for taking the time to join us, Richard. That's Richard Rennie, uh, agri-journalist for Global HQ and, of course, a lot of uh, Richard's stories you can find in Farmers Weekly, the newspaper, or farmersweekly.co.nz. This is Sarah's Country.